Hello, today with us we have Kyle Rojas, who is working on the graph and indexing protocol for querying networks like Ethereum and IPFS, a distributed system for storing and accessing files, websites, applications, and data. Kyle, thank you so much for joining in and finding the time out of your schedule to having a quick chat with us. And of course, jumping in with the first question, what problems does the graph solve and how is it done? Sure. When you look at the crypto space in general, from blockchains like Bitcoin to Ethereum, to oracles like Chainlink, to individual applications like Uniswap, everything's concentrated on, on allowing peer-to-peer -peer interactions and recording those transactions onto an immutable or unchangeable ledger, which is a blockchain. And until the graph, no projects have worked to solve the problem of actually reading that data off the blockchain, let alone organize it and make it accessible for a user in scalable ways. Because of that, again, until the graph, developers had to either manually sift through transactions on their own, which is very tough, uh, or run their own servers, um, index the data themselves, and then build and maintain their own APIs. And that's wasting scarce and expensive developer resources that should be spent on building and improving the project's core product and services and, and UI and UX. The graph solves that problem. It allows developers to build open APIs called subgraphs, which projects can point to the exact information they need from any of the 35 blockchain ecosystems integrated with the protocol. And that data will be indexed, organized, and instantly available to populate in their application or website forever, full stop. And those 35 blockchains integrated with the graph are where we sit right now. Right? We're talking, or at least the graph ecosystem is talking with and will integrate dozens more blockchains soon. The graph will eventually index all data across the entire ecosystem. And even if some of the projects are are working to do this in a centralized way, essentially creating another Web2 SaaS company, um, SaaS being software as a service where projects make money off their users. The graph's a platform working to do this in a decentralized way. And I could dive into why that's important if you'd like, but for now, it's just amazing what the graph technology does. It makes it easy for developers to concentrate on innovation using the graph as a public good and outsource the indexing and query service without needing to waste the time, energy, and money by doing it themselves. And how would you say, how does the graph work in simple terms? In the simplest terms, what Google does for the world's information, the graph does for data recorded within the blockchain ecosystem. We're helping rebuild the internet better with open source, transparent, and community-led infrastructure. And that's pretty incredible and really exciting. So Kyle, can you talk more about what a decentralized platform is and why is that so important? Probably the best start is by defining platform. By definition in this context, a platform is technology that used as a base upon which other applications, processes, or technologies can be developed. For example, the personal computer is a hardware platform that's allowed people to create games, music, video content, as well as connect to the internet in general. The internet is a platform that's led to social media, global communication and interaction and everything else we do online. But platforms in the past, throughout all of human history, have always had centralized gate Keepers. They've always had owners and value extractors. There's always been uh, central entities that control anything from the data to the technology itself to everything housed in and on those platforms. Even if it's the content we create and, and imagine that we should probably own ourselves. The next evolution of the internet, the platforms like the graph and others are, are ushering in is what we call Web3. And that seeks to allow open source innovation that we've seen in the past, in a, but in a decentralized way from the physical and digital infrastructure to the power decision-making and ownership from the top to the bottom of the entire ecosystem. And I'd say going beyond that, getting to what the shift means for the world, uh, what it changes and, and probably the most important of all, like what problems it helps us solve, this shift is helping us decentralize the technology stack. And along with that, it's enabling us to decentralize, like I mentioned, the power and associated dishes and making that comes along with owning the tech stack and servers, like those controlled by Google, Facebook, Twitter, and any other internet platform in today's Web2 world. This decentralized tech stack allows us to realign grossly misaligned incentives and gatekeeping between classes, races, uh, genders, geographies, and, and more, as no one can stop anyone from interacting as long as a person has an internet connection. And these decentralized entities enable verifiable truth, right? With open source and unchangeable data on chain that can be viewed at any time. Not spin, not narrative, but 
verifiable truth sitting in immutable code that can be viewed by anyone with access to the internet. And with the decentralization, we as individuals could finally own and control our own personal data, uh, be in control of our own digital identities, and not simply be used to make companies profit for an exceedingly small number of global entities. What are the revenue streams for the graph and what is Edge and Node where you currently work? I'll start with the organizations working on the graph and then I'll go into the economics for the ecosystem and how people can participate in those economics, as you mentioned. First, the graph was founded in 2017 and in line with our beliefs about decentralization being the better way to build for the world, we decentralized the graph and we made it a public good with Edge and Node, the team I'm on, being a core developer team working on the protocol. And over the past year, or more, the Graph Foundation, which is a separate nonprofit organization also supporting the Graph ecosystem and its growth, has given six sizable grants worth multiple hundreds of millions of dollars to six different companies to have them also act as core developer teams. And these grants are vesting over the next seven to eight years to make sure we're all aligned to continue building this technology for the world. As far as how the roles within the ecosystem work <clears throat> and how each is incentivized. There are three main ways for folks to participate and subsequently potentially earn within the graph ecosystem. One is being an indexer, and that's the most technical role with people essentially running their own graph nodes and acting as mini decentralized Googles by indexing and serving queries to users of the protocol. It's definitely the most difficult and can also be the most lucrative. And there are over, I think there are 167 indexers all over the world right now, but there will likely be many hundreds more in the future, potentially thousands as this platform grows. The second role, a slightly less technical, but still not a passive role in general, is that of curators. And curators deposit GRT on subgraphs or open APIs, and that action is called signaling. And they signal on subgraphs they believe will have a high volume of traffic, meaning a high number of queries. And the higher the curator signal, the more attractive a subgraph is for indexers, which makes them want to index and serve queries for any given subgraph. And then finally, the last role, um, least technical, is delegators. You could think of these as passive stakers who help indexers scale to be able to allow the protocol to scale quite a bit beyond just what indexers can do with their own GRT. And then they delegate the GRT to indexers and increase the indexers capacity to serve queries. And as I think I already mentioned, we at Edge and Node, any of the core devs or the graph protocol in general don't take anything from participants. We are not a value extractor whatsoever. We don't accumulate and or sell data. And the only way we'd make money from the ecosystem is to participate in these roles I mentioned, uh, participate in those roles ourselves. So it's fantastic and it feels really good to be able to create this public good for the world uh, and not be a value extractor in it. Kyle, thank you so much once again for joining in on this quick chat with us. Thank you for tuning in and staying with us. Make sure you check out our social media and I'll see you on the next episode.